Welcome back to the Middle Ages. Remember, medieval Middle Ages are interchangeable, especially with me, because I'm going to use both all the time. It is week number three. Last week, we talked about medieval culture and kind of just the castles, the emperors, the void of power. The We don't really know what we're doing. We don't have that major empire like Rome. And so we're trying to survive. We're trying to figure things out. Medieval art is the precursor, in my opinion, to Renaissance art in the sense that at this time period, people aren't aren't living. They're surviving. People are making it day by day. Some are doing well. Most are like, what's going on? we got to figure things out. Help. It's like that's in big capital letters. And so the art is kind of reflecting that, but more so in the sense of the church. Whoops, we'll go back here. I'm going to move me into the blank space. The church filled that power void, especially the Catholic church. And you can see the arts reflecting that. And you can see the arts putting forth the idea of praising Christianity of promoting their religious thoughts and views. And it was the church who had the money, who had the power. And when you have the money and power, you can hire people and allow people of artistic talents to showcase those. Because especially in the Middle Ages, we can see the start of I like my nice things. There's that difference between I don't, the poor and rich. And it's like the kings and queens want to showcase their wealth and power over some other people. And the Catholic Church and other churches as well were able to kind of take on that power and promote it. So let's start with Romanesque art. It was that popular art style from 1000 to 1300 CE influenced by Roman and Byzantine art. So the Roman Empire. It falls in 476. Byzantine Empire kind of grows into the Eastern Roman Empire, and we start seeing that thing. Focus is religion, which makes a lot of sense. If it's influenced by the Romans near the end of the Roman Empire, them and the Catholic Church were very aligned and worked very much together. So religion, like I just talked about, had the money, had the power, and influenced that. One of the coolest things that came out of ancient Rome is mosaics, taking little things, putting them together, forming a bigger thing. In this sense, art and like tiles. You'll see mosaic tiles all the time. And where you really see it and where it really comes in religion is those stained glass windows. Every time I go by a church and see those stained glass windows, I'm right reminded that that's this type of art that comes from the Romans seeing, oh, thing, like little things can make something better and bigger if you combine them, bring them forth. Uh, Romanesque art is those stained glass, large murals, dome ceilings, carvings. It is kind of like those bigger, grander pictures, those bigger, grander ceilings and carvings to really promote the religion, promote um christianity gothic art style kind of comes a little later gothic art began to use brighter colors dimensions and perspectives so you can see that people are in front of other people and move towards realism it went well beyond religion so when it became that gothic art style it was that idea belief that, okay, we can look at other things. So Gothic became, after the 1300s or near the end of the 1300s or later on in that works for the idea of just that growth, that new um, pieces of work. And when we really see Gothic, or when I think of Gothic more, I think of the architecture. Those flying buttresses are very well shown in the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral. And that gothic, those long spires, that bigger, that grander type of thing. 
is that Gothic architecture that we see rise and fall throughout the time after it becomes popular. Art is not just buildings, just not paintings, just not um, drawings. It's also literature. Beowulf, Canterbury Tales, The Divine Comedy, Travels of Marco Polo are books that came out. Most uh, literature is written by clerics and monks because let's think about it. In the Middle Ages, there wasn't a big push of becoming literate. We saw in ancient Greece, ancient Rome, a lot of people becoming literate. It became a very big thing, and then it falls off because we go back to the idea of, okay, we're not really living. We're trying to survive. We're trying to figure out how to make it to that next day. So the peasants, the commoners, the normal people didn't have – the ability or the know-how to write things down. So religious people who had more power, more money, more opportunity are the ones who had the opportunity, chances, the time to write these books, to write these things. Now, I'm not saying all of these were written by clerics and monks. I'm just saying most were, and those were just some of the major examples that we've probably heard of. Notre Dame. All right, it is one of those... Beautiful cathedrals. I would love to go visit there. I would love to check it out. Um, with the fire recently, it's definitely changed. But you can see the art and the history that's there. It was started in 1163 by King Louis VII of France. So France is spending that money, that time to promote this building. Like I said, you can see the Gothic styles of the pillars, the uh, – what are those? Arches, the windows, those type of things. And it wasn't finished until 1345. Now, from 1345 on, of course, there was improvements, changes, add-ons, subtractions because it doesn't stick still. It was that perfect example of French Gothic architecture. The other major architecture of this time is – um, Hagia Sophia. I think I'm saying that right. If not, it definitely is my bad. But it was originally built as a cathedral back in Istanbul, Turkey in 537. Now, of course, it wasn't Istanbul at the time. It was Constantinople. And remember, when Rome, when the Western Roman Empire fell, the Eastern Roman Empire was still there, but it slowly turned into the Byzantine Empire. But at the beginning, it was Catholic. But as the Byzantine Empire kind of grew and flourished and the other influences of the Middle East started to rise up, it turned into a mosque. So Muslim and Islam or the Islamic faith started to become more popular there and it turned into a mosque. Then today... It is a museum representing the ancient times, representing what took place in this area. It is known for the dome. It was one of the tallest structures for a very long time. And looking at it and seeing when it was built, you got to be pretty impressed with it for those dome structures, for those tall pillars, for the the continuality of this building. It did, It wasn't meant to break. It wasn't falling. It stood there strong. And that is next week where we see how this art bleeds into the Renaissance. So if I stop sharing, you get me full screen. Side note, I'm not an art historian. I am a historian. Um, I have plenty of experience with art history, but that's why, because of my focus is more on the other parts of history, that's why these videos are usually going to be a little shorter, relying and opening up to you to find your research. So for this week's discussion post, I want you to pick a work of art. Now, remember, work of art can be a painting or drawing or sculpture like we probably typically think of, but it also can be architecture, literature, poetry, and many, many more. So if you want to find something other than the typical works of art, go for it. So you're going to pick that work of art. You're going to tell us, what about it? 
who created it, why it was created, the story behind it, why you picked it. Just kind of give us that good background information because you're the expert. You're telling us all about it. We want to learn from you. I want to learn from you so that I can grow my education just as much as you are growing yours with this class. And then the second part of the discussion post question is, how does it show medieval or Middle Ages culture? All right, so this whole class is about looking at culture and art and how they reflect each other. So your discussion post is picking that work of art that shows this culture. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. But have fun and good luck.